da 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 Oh, it's the Beantown Sports Wolf cast. Oh, the Sables take us home. Da 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 da. Welcome everybody, and this is our returning and never before done episode of the Beantown Sports Wolf cast. Patriots preseason starts today, and for the first time in over a year and a half, there'll be fans at Foxborough. And the Red Sox are finally getting off the slide with momentum and the shellacking off the Rays last night. We lost David Krejci in Boston. The Celtics signed a guy in free agency. I have a lot to catch up with because the Wolf has been slacking. Find out on the Bean Town Sports Wolf Cast. <laughs> Come on, guys, cut it out. There's a, I know there's a lot to be excited about, but I'm going to start off with talking about the Red Sox, and I'll go with Patriots preseason action. But before the Patriots, I should go over a tribute to David Krejci and go over a little Celtics news. I'll try to get all four teams recapped in one for the first time ever since I've been so behind. I apologize, folks. A lot of personal issues getting in the way of the Versace stoner in me, and it's my fault, and I've been slacking. So the Wolf cast will be back in full force as it is the prime of the year. As hopefully the Red Sox make a postseason post push. Full NBA and NHL seasons coming in October and November, and you got Patriots action, which the Wolf loves football. So let's get into the Sox now, shall we? So the Red Sox, we're getting into a little. Skid losing three out of only winning three out of the past nine games prior to the last night against the Tampa Bay Rays. The Wolf is extremely jealous of those Floridians. They took our boy, our savior, TB12, from us. They got not one but two Stanley Cups and they made a World Series appearance last year in Tampa Bay in this shortened pandemic esque type season. But Tonight, the Sox should be recapping. Hopefully, they get the nod over the Rays. The Rays are in first place, and the Sox are only behind, I believe, three and a half games at 4 10 p.m. today at Fenway. But last night was so damn good to watch. Me, as a sports and wrestling fan, I've been paying attention to AEW Dynamite on TNT, but I also, I'm a multitasker as being a sports and wrestling fan, okay? The Wolf. Has a doesn't have a lot of time on his hands. He tries to take advantage as much as possible. But holy cow, did Nathan Avaldi have an ass kicking game? Finally, they did so well. Finally, they had a clinic hitting parade. But it also helps that Evaldi threw a a heater across the strike zone. He struck out not one. Not two, not even five times, but double as in 10 strikeouts the whole day. I think he had a couple innings when it went hitless. But holy cow, the Red Sox are getting hot at the right time after their recent struggles. But guess what else is happening this weekend when they take on Baltimore, folks? You've got the man recovering from Tommy John. Chris Sale, who helped them win a World Series a few years ago. An all-star pitcher we've been missing not only last year, but most of this year. I know Steven Stratsburg of the Nationals had a tough time recovering. A lot of these pitchers get these Tommy John surgeries, and some people are never the same, hitters or pitchers. But boy, do we have the right time for them. It will give their bullpen a much-needed rest, because our bullpen has been struggling a bit. But you've got J- Rafael Devers finally back to form. you got both. You got J.D. Martinez hitting so many RBIs last night. You also got Hunter Renfro, who's been a three hit, four RBIs last night. That is amazing, folks. And we've been kicking the Yankees' ass all season long. We did lose a few games the last time to the Yankees, but that's okay. It was at New York. And usually the Yankees have our number all these years, but not anymore. Maybe their salary cap issues with Stanton and Everyone else is finally 
not being good. And Aaron Judge still has been doing really well, but he's carrying the Yankees. Usually the Yankees have a big-ass all-star team like the 1990 Olympic basketball U.S. team with Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, etc., and David Robinson. And I'm just saying that because I've seen Funkos at my local Target. No big deal, right, folks? But I think if the Red Sox want to keep up the momentum, we have a really good hitting parade. They did lose the 10 out of their last 12 contests. I said 3 out of 9 because I saw a statistic. Anyone after the All-Star break that lose, wins 3 and loses 9-2 have gone on to win the World Series 6 out of the past 10 years, including the Dodgers last year. You got the Cubs that did it five years ago when they faced the now formerly known as the Indians, the Guardians. But it's been they've been on a slump for weeks. It's normal if they play 162 games a year, basically half a year. And of course, you're going to have struggles when you play it consecutively every day. That's the way the major leagues are. You got a guy called up from Worcester, Bobby Delbach, hit five RBIs last night. That is really good as I feel like they finally got momentum. And we got Chris Sale coming this week. And we got a guy before the trade deadline from the Cubs, Kyle Schwarber, who's been, who helped the Cubs break their over 100-year Billy Goat curse, having a huge power hitter. We did not get Anthony Rizzo, but that's okay. We got a bat, like what we need. And we got help on the way with Chris Sale coming in, which is awesome. He was an all-star before he got injured in spring training before the pandemic hit the U.S. waves. That is really awesome. The Rays won the first match. The Red Sox won last night. And we got a starting pitcher who doesn't have a lot of experience. Today at 4 o'clock. I, it's ironic they're at 4 o'clock because the Patriots start today, which I'm so excited. You've got the pitcher master, Ram, Ramarson from Tampa Bay. 1-1 one one record, 4.15 ERA. Facing Tanner Hoak. First overall pick in 2017 for the Red Sox. That is really good, folks. But he was 3-0 last year. He's 0-2 so far. He did come out a lot of the bullpen, but they needed a, an extra pitcher right before a sale comes in. But you got Evaldi leading the way for the Red Sox starting pitching this year, which has been really good. You got the Red Sox have potential if they get off this slide. Then not only could they make the playoffs and win, they could win the World Series. But you got the Blue Jays and Yankees crawling behind them with six and six and a half games each, respectively, of the first place Tampa Bay. Forget about the Orioles. They only have one good season up since Cal Ripken retired. The only good thing about them is that ballpark. Oh, it's worth shitting on. You've got Christian Vasquez as a catcher, being really good chemistry with most of the pitchers. He also has eight stolen pitches. You've got Matt Barnes as a great closer for the Red Sox. May have been injured, but he should be coming back. You've got Eduardo Rodriguez, who's been doing really well with uh, not only 139 strikeouts, but he has eight wins. He may have six losses, but he has a good ERA. Everyone has to get better if they want to keep the momentum. Baseball has this quote very well that you think of a Boston Marathon race. It's not about how you start, it's how you finish. And boy, does August and September mean the most important months of baseball. Not April and May when it's still cold out. But anyways, are you ready to move on, folks? I sure am. Before we go on to the New England Patriots preseason contest tonight... I want to talk about, I would like to thank David Krejci from the bottom of my heart for everything he's done for Boston. He's going back to his home country. We knew he was going to leave. But you got Tuka Rats who's going to be injured for the first half of next year. But we also had a bunch of good pickups. I am so happy we. I was glorifying over Taylor Hall all throughout the postseason preseason recaps. I also think we... uh. I'd like to thank Kevin Millar, a veteran defenseman for the NHL, who retired too. He really helped the team fill in when Zidane O'Chara left for Washington. You also got 
the Bruins losing a top prospect, Lazan, Jeremy Lazan, to the new Seattle Kraken in the expansion draft. But you got Brandon Carlo. We got Frederick that signed with us. We also have a lot of young guys they signed. A lot of people feel mixed about it. But I do trust the Bruins as they always find a way to stay in playoff contention during the free agency. A lot of people think the Bruins got screwed out of free agency. But I do like to trust the process. I really do. We got Nick Furlano from the Columbus Blue Jackets at two years, $3.8 million. We also got some prospects with Thomas Nosak and Eric Hula, who I don't know well. Both have a little bit under a $5 million cap hit for two years. But what we need is a good defenseman to take Chara's place. Yeah, we got McAvoy. We got Carlo. He needs to stay healthy. But we also got a Derek Forber, a defenseman. That's what we really need. But we signed a lot of forwards, like I said, Falanjo, Hua. And we even got Nosak. But we also signed another con- goaltender because Tuka might be out with his back for the first half of the season. And uh, in early 22, he should be coming back. But who knows if he'll be a Boston Bruin by the time ended. But the brass could be over too. So we're losing a lot of guys. But at least we have Greswick for a long-term extension with the Bruins, which is really good. But, but there's not much going on right now. But the Celtics also made, made a huge signing. A huge signing. I'm all done talking about the Bruins for today. As more news should be coming throughout the summer. As it is a quiet time. Same as the Celtics. They've been in their spring leagues. But they signed Dennis Schroeder from the Lakers for a one year $5.5 million deal folks. I think that is a great move. As we do have a... Guy who turned down eighty million from the Los Angeles Lakers to come to us, as Kemba Walker, as you know, got traded to the Oklahoma City Thunder, which is a big loss, regardless of how you feel about Walker, how he didn't show up sometimes, or had a tough time staying healthy. That we want a guy who appreciates the Celtics history, dating back to the Larry Bird days and the Magic Johnson days of the Los Angeles Lakers. Hopefully they get their rivalry back as we know LeBron James will be healed from the injury report by the time November comes. But it, is, it was a disappointing season for the Celtics getting losing in five games to the Brooklyn Nets who have a bunch of stream team superstars with, uh, with Kevin Durant. They also have uh, James Harden. That's going to be really hard. For the Celtics to compete as the whole Eastern Div- Atlantic Division has gotten so much better over the past few years. Celtics do have a lot of prospects, but it should be interesting what their season looks like. But now, folks, drum roll, please. The moment you've been waiting for. The moment you've been waiting for. As a most electrifying man once said, finally, finally, it is time for Gillette Stadium to finally have fans in the building in good old Foxborough after over a year and a half, a whole year and playing in freaking empty stadiums, which fucking sucks, folks. It is time. We got a huge draft prospect in Mac Jones. We have to return to Dante Hightower. We got a huge quarterback controversy in New England with uh, Cam Newton who really struggled last year after he got COVID sick. A lot of people need to give him a chance. And you got Mac Jones who originally all offseason we thought Newton was going to be the starter. The Alabama prospect is Mac Jones. I think he's the guy long term for the Patriots. They're both going to get equally reps against a team formerly known as the Washington Redskins. The Washington football team has the worst stadium in all of football. The old wolf got food poisoning. You're going to laugh, folks. How ironic is this? A year but be- October before the pandemic, with Tom Brady's last year, they went to the 
when they were the Redskins at the time, I should have bought merchandise and may have been worth a lot of money on eBay due to the name change. You had Adrian Peterson on the Redskins. And to make it funny, was this a shadow of foreshadowing? I got sick from their concession stands. I also had two empty seats on the left, two empty seats on the right. I social distanced before it was a requirement in this country, folks. And when the team was called the Redskins. And it was Brady's last road game I've ever saw him play. So if that didn't tell you anything, I don't know. I should have known better at the time, folks. That the stadium was so shitty. But anyways, it's a time for the future. As you got the Washington football team, who made a very, very surprise appearance. Now, NFC East Divisional winners last year, which also got destroyed by our former savior, Tom Brady, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the NFC newly expanded wild card. Well, I am so excited for the Patriots to be back in action. I know the fans are. Gillette needs fans. I can't wait till the PA announcer says, and it's another Patriot first down. But the real controversy that everyone's looking at Who's going to be the Pats starting QB in week one? Is it going to be the veteran Cam Newton? Or is it going to be Mac Jones, a newly drafted prospect, as the Patriots take on the Washington football team? They also have a bunch of defensive tackles and defensive ends and Ronnie Perkins and Christian Barrymore, second and third pick. We also got a lot of running backs getting reps since we lost Rex. Burkhead, I believe. We got James White, Sony Michelle, and we got the emergent Damian Harris, who's a, who st- tore the storm with his uh, newly released running back skills last year before he got injured. You got Sony Michelle, who returned from a huge injury last year. You got a lot of running backs. The thing is, if you're an avid fantasy football player, whether it's season long or daily from FanDuel DraftKings, you don't know who gets the reps. Out of all 32 teams, the Patriots have very questionable running back repetitions, which does hurt your lineups, but you shouldn't go against it because Bill Belichick usually doesn't like to reveal a lot of stuff. But you got Jacoby Myers, who was the only receiver who did really good last year, and you got Nikhil Harry trying to look and to prove himself, and you got former Eagles and Raiders deep wideout. Nelson Aguilar signing a one-year deal with the Patriots. And you also got a lot of guys practicing. Hopefully they get good chemistry tonight. Washington football team has a really good defense. They even picked up the most inconsistent veterans in NFL history. Ryan Fitzpatrick. He'll have games where he throws for six touchdowns and no intercepts. Then he'll have a game where he throws three picks. He's so inconsistent. You don't know what you're going to get from him. But you got Jacoby Myers, Kendrick Bourne from the from the San Francisco 49ers. We had a huge tight end pickups trying to recreate that Gronk Hernandez combo. Obviously, Hernandez did a really horrible thing. I hate to even mention that. But we got former tight end all star Hunter Henry. We got J- Johnu Smith who came from Tennessee. But Hunter Henry has an injury that will be out most of the preseason. So Johnu Smith will. Probably overtake him as the number one receiver. You got Isaiah Wynn all healthy. Zach Mason. Trent Brown. I am so excited to see these guys. We need to rebuild our offense. But I know we're so spoiled because of the Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski, and Julian Edelman days. But we got a huge advantage. Because we won seven games with the worst offense in all of football last year, folks. I'm pretty confident. I know the Bills are really good. You had the Dolphins who almost made the playoffs have a great defense with Brian Flores. And you got the Bills who almost made it to the Super Bowl with Stephon Diggs, uh, um, Josh Allen. They're going to be tough. And the Jets are the Jets. They always get a high rookie QB every year who never turns out to be good. Uh, Hopefully it's that way. I think the Patriots will be a lot better than everyone expects. You got Donta Hightower coming back. Juwan Bentley, Lawrence Guy. A lot of these guys are going to get a lot of reps. You got Gilmore out tonight. I'd like to see what Williams and Millis can do as second and third stringers. You got Gunnar Olwinski, who could be a slot receiver. He's a special teams all-star, similar to what Matthew Slater was for the 
for the special teams. You've got J.C. Jackson, who led the NFL in interceptions, believe it or not. Kyle Van Noy's back from Miami after a temporary release. But I'm really excited. It doesn't matter if they win or lose because it's preseason. I just want to see how these guys do. Because preseason means nothing. you got the worst teams usually going 4-0 every year. And the Patriots usually go 2-2 two and two or 3-1 and one because you use it to evaluate your players. But I think they're going to be good this year. And before I go, keep turning to the VSW. I should make it to a opening day of the Patriots Dolphins. So keep an eye out for our YouTube page. Give some of our wrestling highlights a look too with the Versace Stoner. And disable foul. Goodbye folks. The following was a VSW presentation. Please subscribe, follow on all social media platforms, including, most importantly, YouTube, for the VSW podcast. Over 50 subscribers we've been getting a day. Please join the movement as we thank you for watching this feature Wolfcast presentation.